Welcome back. This is day five of ecology. And today we're going to be talking about how can we evaluate the effects of pesticide on the food chain. Now, what exactly is pesticide? Well, whenever we see the phrase or the suffix is side at the end of the word, this word means killing. Okay, so we're killing something, but what exactly is a pest? Well, if you live in an apartment about once a month, you probably have an exterminator come into your home and they're there as pest control. So what is the job of the exterminator? Well, it's to kill tiny little pests in your home, like cockroaches or bugs or just insects in general. So pesticides are talking about substances used to destroy insects or other organisms harmful to plants or to animals. So pesticides are used pretty frequently um, in managing crops. I mean, you can see here in this picture, they're sprayed on those crops um, to prevent insects from getting up in there and eating the crops because they need to be sold to humans like us so we can eat them and we can't eat them if the insects get there first. Um, but pesticides can have some pretty nasty effects on the environment if we're not careful. And today we're gonna to be talking about one pretty prevalent example of that known as DDT. So the very first thing we're gonna to do today is read through this do now together. Now this is a, an extended do now. Um, so I want you to read through this passage. I'll be reading through it with you if you want to follow along. Make sure you underline or highlight any important information. And then we're gonna use these, this passage to answer the following questions, all right? So this is called the DDT story. If there is a single pesticide almost everyone can name, it's DDT. DDT was one of the first chemicals in widespread use as a pesticide. Following World War II, it was promoted as a wonder chemical, the simple solution to pest problems large and small. Today, nearly 40 years after DDT was banned in the US, we continue to live with its long lasting effects. <clears throat> so in terms of food supplies, the USDA found DDT breakdown products in 60% of heavy cream samples, 42% of kale greens, 28% of carrots, and a lower percentage in many other foods. In terms of human body, um, the DDT breakdown products were found in the blood of 99% of people tested by the CDC. And in terms of health impacts, girls exposed to DDT before pu puberty are five times more likely to develop breast cancer in middle age, according to the president's cancer panel. Now, banned for agricultural uses worldwide by the 2001 Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants, the use of DDT is still permitted in small quantities in countries that need it, with support mobilized for the transition to safer and more effective alternatives. One of the new EPA's first acts was to ban DDT due to both concerns about harm to the environment and the potential for harm to human health. There was also evidence linking DDT with severe declines in bald eagle populations due to thinning eggshells. Since DDT was banned in the US, bald eagles have made a dramatic recovery. And you can actually see this in this um, infographic that's on your paper as well as the screen. So DDT was first used widespread in the US in the 1940s. Okay, and prior to that introduction, there were about 600 to 800 breeding pairs of bald eagles found in the Chesapeake Bay. But right after we started using DDT, um, about 30 years later in the 70s, we actually only found 60 breeding pairs of bald eagles found on the bay, again, due to those thinning eggshells. But then in 72, once we realized this was having some pretty detrimental effects, the US banned the applications or most applications of DDT and then in as early as 2001, we found 646 breeding pairs of bald eagles in the bay. And then just a few years ago in 2016, there were up to 2000 breeding pairs of bald eagles found on the bay. So it's very clear that immediately after we started using DDT, those bald eagle populations declined. But as soon as we banned that product, those bald eagle populations skyrocketed again, got back up to where they used to be and even flourished even better than they previously had, okay? Um, now, the science on DDT's human health impacts has continued to mount over the years, with recent studies showing harm at very low levels of exposure. Studies show a range of human health effects linked to DDT and its breakdown product, DDE, including breast and other cancers, male infertility, miscarriages and low birth weight, developmental delay, and nervous system and liver damage. The only remaining legal use of DDT is to control malaria-carrying mosquitoes. A devastating disease, malaria kills more than 800,000 people every year, the majority of deaths amongst children in sub-Saharan Africa. 
An indoor spraying with DDT is one of a number of tools being used to control malaria around the world. So DDT is actually still being used on a minimal scale in Africa to control this malaria spread. Um, but using that information, I do want you guys to answer the following questions. So go ahead and pause this video, answer questions one and two, and press play when you're ready to review them. <clears throat> All right. Number one, what is DDT and what did humans use it for? Well, DDT is a pesticide that was really popular in the US in the 1940s and it was used for pest control. But it was actually initially used by the military in World War II and this wasn't mentioned in the passage, but it was used to control malaria, body lice, bubonic plague, etc. So they used it to really stop the spread of diseases amongst populations. Um, but then farmers realized, hey, this is actually working really well and began using it on food crops to prevent pests from destroying their crops. And that's when its popularity began to skyrocket because you can see here, we were spraying it on people, we were spraying it on the ground, we were spraying, spraying it in crops. We were really spraying it everywhere thinking like, hey, this is doing great things for us. We're getting rid of all these pests, but was it as good as we thought it was? No. So why did the US stop using DDT? Well, for two reasons. The US stopped DDT after we stopped using DDT after we realized it was linked to several, several health defects amongst humans including things like breast cancer and other cancers as well, male infertility, miscarriages and low birth weight amongst babies, developmental delay, and then nervous system and liver damage amongst humans as well. But then in addition, we also realized it was impacting animals around us as well. So DDT was also linked to the decline of the bald eagle population that we saw earlier, as the chemicals made their eggshells thinner and unable to support the growing offspring. So not only was it affecting us, we also saw that it was affecting other animals, but how did spraying this insecticide impact eagles? Because I'm pretty sure they weren't spraying this directly on eagles. It's not like they like got all the eagles together and started spraying them. So how did this affect them? Well, this is when something called biomagnification comes into play. Because when we spray those pesticides on the ground, when we spray them on beaches, when we spray them in, um, in fields, a little bit of that DDT or the poison or the pesticide is going to end up in the water, right? It's going to get washed off of the fields and end up in rivers or in oceans. And a tiny bit of that is going to stay in the water, which means that those plants and those tiny organisms living in the water are going to have a little bit of DDT. Such a small concentration down here that it doesn't really affect those plants or those animals at a huge scale. All right, it says my internet connection is unstable, so I'm gonna say that again. Okay, so then I, I said, so why is this a big deal, okay? Because it's such a small concentration in the water that these plants and these organisms, these tiny organisms at the bottom of the food chain aren't really affected. It's a really tiny concentration. So why does this matter? Well, the problem is, is that as these other animals start eating other organisms in this food chain, the concentration increases because that poison doesn't go away. And so even though these zooplankton had a pretty low concentration of DDT, the small fish that ate those zooplankton suddenly have now a bigger concentration, which means the large fish that are now eating that small, those small fish have a larger concentration as well. And then we get up to the fish eating birds, the top of the food chain. They're now eating organisms where the entire food chain has been affected by DDT. And that concentration is just increasing throughout the food chain because again, that poison, that pesticide does not go away. It doesn't disappear. So it just builds up and increases throughout this food chain. And this eagle that's eating fish that have been affected by DDT is suddenly really, really affected by this poison. And this is what led to the thinning of those um, eggshells because they had such a large concentration of DDT in them that it was causing them to die and they couldn't sustain life. So I don't think you guys need to write this down, but this just kind of explains what I just said is that the level of DDT in each organism increases as the chemical moves up along through that food chain. Because again, the chemical doesn't disappear. It just keeps moving throughout that food chain. And so harmful effects can occur at the highest trophic levels like with this eagle up here, um, because they're eating organisms that have that DDT has been throughout the entire food chain at this point. It just keeps moving all the way up. So it's in the highest concentration when it gets to this bald eagle, okay? Um, so I do want you guys to write down this definition. What exactly is biomagnification? Well, this is the process where toxic substances like DDT 
become increasingly concentrated within living organisms as they move up each step of the food chain. So again, even though the concentration is pretty low down here with the water and with the producers, as we move through the food chain, we see that that concentration increases by about 10 each time it goes up through the food chain. And we'll talk about that more in just a second. All right, so how exactly does this work? There are a few blanks you guys need to fill in on your paper. Well, toxins can enter a food chain through several means. They can be ingested, which means eaten. They can be absorbed through the skin or inhaled, um, and plants can even take them in directly through the soil. So then when herbivores eat contaminated plants, the toxins start to accumulate in their body tissues. And then if a carnivore eats several toxin-laden herbivores, those toxins become even more concentrated in the carnivore's body. And this is that process of biomagnification where it continues up the food chain and the concentrations get larger. So toxin concentrations, and clear, or toxin concentrations increase nearly 10 times at each food chain level. Thus, a biomagnifying toxin potentially becomes most harmful to those top predators, including humans who eat meat or fish. So we can be affected by this as well. But then why is this dangerous? So toxins can accumulate quickly through the food web as each consumer takes in more and more of that toxin. Again, that toxin doesn't disappear. It's just going to continue to increase in concentration. So that means the larger animals in the higher trophic levels get the bigger doses of those accumulated, to accumulated toxins. So in many cases, toxins can be transported through the food web to humans, again, through contaminated shellfish or other food sources. And this also means that bioaccumulated toxins can lead to the loss or extinction of many species. Um, if we hadn't intervened and banned the use of DDT, we very well could have seen the extinction of that bald eagle population um, because our, something that we did the use of those pesticides were making it impossible for those bald eagles to survive. We thinned the chemicals, I'm sorry, I, I should say the chemicals thinned the eggshells so much that those bald eagles couldn't survive, okay? Their eggshells weren't strong enough to support the growing organisms inside of them. And that led to the overall decrease of their population. So this, if we aren't careful with what we're doing can lead to the extinction of many species. And this same thing is actually happening right now um, with microplastics. So even though we've banned DDT and that's not really an issue anymore, at least in the US, we're still having the same effect here with micro, with micro and macroplastics, okay? So basically when our plastic trash ends up in the ocean, over time it will start to degrade. It will start to break down and get smaller. But those smaller plastic pieces don't disappear, okay? They end up in the ocean. And so then organisms that eat in the ocean, start to ingest these microplastics. You can see this right here, that even these small crabs and, fit, or, and shrimp are eating those microplastics, those really small pieces of plastic. And so what happens? Well, <laughs> that concentration of microplastics increases as it moves through the food chain. So these, um, why can I not speak English today? <laughs> these turtles are going to have a, a higher concentration of plastics inside of them. Same thing, these eagles right here are going to have a higher concentration of plastics inside of them. And there have actually been a lot of stories recently about like whales and dolphins that have washed up on the shores of beaches. And when you cut them open, they're just filled with plastics inside of them. That is biomagnification happening where we see these toxins or plastics moving through the, the food chain and becoming more concentrated as we get to those top predators. Um, so using that information, I do want to ask you guys, why does the animal at the top of the food chain have the most poison or the most plastics? Why does it have the biggest effect? Why is it more affected than those smaller organisms? So right now, I actually want you guys to pause this video, answer questions one, two, and three, and press play when you're ready to review them. All right, so why are the animals at the top most affected? Well, by the time the top predators eat, every organism before them in the food chain has already been affected by that poison. Again, we've said it a million times, but that poison, those plastics don't disappear. They're just going to continue to increase in concentration as they move throughout the food chain. And so because of this, those top predators now have the highest concentration of the poison. Every organism they eat has now been touched by this poison. Okay, but number two, why did the organisms at the bottom of the food chain not have the effect of the poison? Well, again, it goes back to those concentrations. 
The organisms at the bottom of the food chain have the lowest relative concentration of that poison. And because it's relatively low, they won't feel the effects of this poison quite as dramatically as those at the top will. Now, why is this called biomagnification? Well, as the poison moves up the food chain, its effects in organisms are either magnified or amplified. Those effects get bigger as you move up through the food chain. All right. And that is all I've got for you guys today. So that was kind of a depressing lesson, but it's important to talk about how as humans, we have impact on every single organism around us, right? We've got a really strong hold um, on the ecosystems that we're a part of. So it's important that we take care of our environment because unfortunately our actions can lead to the extinction of animals and currently are leading to the extinction of several species. Okay, so I'm hoping that we can turn this around, um, but it takes knowledge to do so. And okay, now I'm, I'm gonna get off my soapbox and actually end this video, but <laughs> um, please make sure you fill out your exit ticket. Um, have a wonderful day and please let me know if you have any questions about this. Okay, have a wonderful day and I will see you all tomorrow.